Welcome to Unit 5 on Genetic Algorithms. In this unit, we will introduce crossover and mutation operations and we'll conclude our discussion on various processes in genetic algorithms. We will follow this archive's preprint. This tutorial explains genetic algorithm with a simple problem in an excellent way. And this archive's preprint -pre has 50 citations and is suitable for undergraduate students. As discussed in the last unit, the simple function x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 plus 4x4 is equal to 30 is solved using genetic algorithm in this tutorial. So we have four unknowns. You call it a, b, c, d, or x1, x2, x3, x4. So we start with deciding the number of chromosomes, genes per chromosome, uh, which, is, which are four. And we initialize the population randomly. Then repeat an iterative process until convergence is shown in this diagram. We have population, then compute the fitness of each chromosome in the population, uh, which for our example is the absolute difference between x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 plus 4x4 and 30. And the difference closer to zero is good, and exactly zero means on target. Then based on the fitness values, we compute the fitness probabilities and the survival of the fittest is, is then decided using roulette wheel selection. And for roulette wheel selection, we need to construct the CDF as discussed in unit 4. Here we want to emphasize that this selection process is still stochastic and not deterministic. Why? Just to ensure diversity. Okay, next process is our crossover and mutation which we will discuss today and the convergence is also uh, we haven't discussed it it decides whether uh, when to stop or whether to stop or continue the iterative process and the end we select the best of the final generation as the possible solution to the problem so we need to minimize the absolute difference between uh, a plus 2, B plus 3, C plus 4, D and 30. You call it X1 plus 2, X2 plus 3, X3 plus 4, X4 or A, B, C, D, whatever, it's the same. Okay, so we have four genes per chromosome and six chromosomes and randomly initialized. Then compute the fitness of each with the objective function. Uh, the fitness values or objective function values are calculated for all six chromosomes like these. For further processing, we need probabilities. So we need to convert these fitness, values, these fitness values to probabilities, which we do by computing the fraction first. Fractions first. One divided by one plus the fraction, the fitness values. So we add one in the denominator to avoid division by zero exceptions. Here, one more important point is that computing 1 divided by fitness value means that larger values will result in smaller fractions, which will ultimately uh, result in smaller probabilities. This is because um, larger values are far away from zero, and we consider values closer to zero as more fitter. Okay, if we add these fractions, then they, they sum to 0 0.0845, which means these numbers do not represent probability as probability sum to 1. If we take each fraction and divide by the sum, now we get probability which when added, the sum is 1. The next step is this, this selection of the fit, fittest individuals or fittest chromosomes using roulette wheel, which needs CDF, which is cumulative distribution function, and we discussed it in the unit 4. Let's reproduce the probabilities. The CDF is then computed using sum scan and 0 0.1254 plus 0 is 0 0.1254. Then adding 0 0.1456 to 0 0.1254 results in 0 0.27 and so on. The running sum is computed. If you observe the last element uh, in the, of the CDF is 1.0. Now for selection from the CDF, we have six random tosses. And where the toss lie uh, decides the toss where the tosses lie basically decides which chromosome will carry to the next generation. 
For example, if R1 is 0.201, which is greater than 0.1254 and less than 0.271010, then it lies in this range. So the range is this one and chromosome. Uh, so the range is this one and chromosome two is selected. It means the first individual in the next generation will be the current chromosome two. Similarly, for R4, chromosome six will be selected and so on. Let us reproduce the last status of the population for easy discussion. So the new chromosomes are uh, updating the population 1, 4, 5 in the last generation are replaced by chromosome 2, 3 and 4 respectively. After the roulette wheel selection, some of the chromosomes in the new population pair and produce new offsprings using reproduction. And reproduction is obtained via crossover. So if we have two individuals in green and yellow color and the crossover point is at the middle then the new offspring will inherit 50. It can be like this as well. We only need to be consistent. Okay, let's formally see the reproduction process and the crossover rate first. The first thing is the uh, crossover rate which is denoted by rho c. If it is 0 0.25 then if we need to randomly toss the kind six times six because we have six chromosomes and if the random tosses are like these then we compare each number with 0 0.25 if any number is less than rho c then such as for chromosome one and chromosome six then these are selected as parents if only one parent is selected uh, then repeat the process because we need at least two parents okay let's go back to the draft here we assume that these six random numbers are generated and one, four and five are selected as parents. Now what happens to two, three and six? They may carry forward to the next generation. They may carry forward to the next generation as it is. Maybe because there are different implementations of GA. Now one, four and five are selected as parents and one, four is same as four, one. So we consider only one combination and hence we have total of three distinct combinations possible. The parents can be 1 comma 4 and 4 comma 5 and 1 comma 5 and each one produces one offspring. Next is selecting the crossover point which may be 25% or 50%. Remember we used crossover rate earlier which determined how many pairs will reproduce. Now parents are already decided and they are ready for reproduction and we need to decide the crossover point. For this, we again generate a random number in the range of 1 to 3. We may use modulus operator and do some tricks with it. However, in general, generating random number in floating point domain of 0 to 1 is better than 4. And you can experiment with it and you will find that the distribution is more uniform in the former case. Okay, so a, as we have three reproductions, so we generate three numbers telling us the crossover point for each reproduction. Let's reproduce the older population for ease of understanding. Thus the new population after the reproduction at the crossover point is now like this. Here I have shown the last status of the population uh, for ease of understanding. Okay, 1, 4, 5 chromosomes are unchanged while 2, 3 and 6 are the new offsprings. Now we, we are almost done but one step is still left which is mutation. Mutation is a random change in some genes of the whole population. And the amount of mutation is controlled by mutation rate which is usually very low. So if mutation rate is 10 percent so if mutation rate is 10 percent we have a total of 24 genes the only uh, two genes are will mutate again we can use the modulus operator and do some tricks okay now assume that 12 gene number 12 and gene number 18 are selected then genes at location 12 and 18 are reassigned random numbers and according to our initial constraint the numbers are in the range of 0 to 30. This is our new population. This population again undergoes the same operation, computing fitness, probability, roulette with selection from CDA and reproduction via crossover mutation. If we compare the fitness of this generation with the fitness of the last generation, we will find that this generation has comparatively better overall accumulated fitness than the last generation. 
So it means we have more fitter individuals in generation at time t than at time t minus 1. As uh, fitness cl closer to 0 is better, we mean that is more fitter. If we repeat the reproduction cross or mutation process, we get another generation like this. And maybe repeating this process for some time, finally we get a chromosome which solves the f of x linearity. R is very close to the 0. Okay, so let's recap the whole process. We start with an initial population followed by computing the fitness and selecting the roulette wheel, uh, select and selection using the roulette wheel and CDF and the reproduction via cross on mutation and then deciding the convergence which we haven't discussed until now and we will discuss it next unit. For now, if you have any question, please ask in the comment. Thank you. And I will upload the corresponding archives preprint to the CMS. So uh, you can study it. Okay. If you have any question, please ask in the comment.